The distribution network example that I just described is an example of a more general idea or phenomena known as highly optimized tolerance. So highly optimized tolerance refers to a class of models for um, generating power laws and other things um, put forth, I think, first by Gene Carlson and John Doyle. Again, I'll put references in the additional section, uh, additional resources section. So uh, tolerance, what is, how is tolerance being used in this setting? Well, the idea is tolerance to some sort of a random failure. So in this setup, if we have one of these links gets broken at random, that's bad news because everything downstream from it now doesn't get that resource, water or the train or whatever this is. Whereas here, if there's a uh, random failure, well, that's still a bummer. Random failure is never good. But um, it only affects a chunk of the network. It's not going to affect the entire network. So um, what these models tend to show is that if you um, optimize something to be tolerant to random failure, you often get power law behavior or approximate power law behavior as a result. So um, they phrased, Carlson and Doyle phrased their model originally in terms of a uh, forest fire model. So uh, I thought I would explain the general ideas behind that. It's actually a very similar story to this. And uh, let's see what you think. So here's the situation. We have a forest, which I'll just draw as a green rectangle. And this is supposed to be just solid forest all in here. And um, if there were some lightning and a spark happened, that orange dot is a spark, um, what would happen is this entire forest would burn and you would lose the entire forest. So that's, that's not good. So people thought, well, gee, maybe we can uh, protect ourselves against forest fires with a fire break. So here's the idea behind that. Again, we have a forest. And let's see, I guess I'll do a fire break in black. The idea is that we cut a wide road or something through that, like through the forest, right down the middle, so that if there's a fire in one half, it can't spread to the other half. So now if there's a, a spark, a lightning strike, and these might hit at random, boom, it hits here, that's bad, all this burns, but this side doesn't burn. So that's great, the fire break has been, um, it's been successful. So then you might think, all right, well, let's put, uh, you know, so this fire break saved half the forest. What if I put a fire break, you know, added another fire break here? Even better. Then if there's a spark here, boom, that burns, but these three quadrants don't. And so then you might think, well, gee, let's get uh, more and more fire breaks. And that's good up to a point because when you make a fire break, you're losing some forest, right? You cut this down and then you don't let any trees grow there. So you're losing that resource. So there's some sort of limit to how many fire breaks you put. Eventually, um, I mean, right, the best thing from a fire break point of view would just be to cut down the entire forest, make it all into one big fire break, but then you have no forest left, you can't grow trees. That's clearly not optimal. Um, another idea would be to, well, what if I know that the spark's going to hit here. I'll just put a fire break right around that. Then no big deal. Um, however, the picture in this model, and it's an accurate one, right, is we don't know where fires are going to start, where lightning's going to strike. We can't predict that. Um, if we could, we would just put little fire breaks right around every little lightning strike. So then the idea behind this approach, if we want to do this as well as possible, meaning save as many of the trees as we can, then we want to think about the distribution of lightning strikes, these orange dots. And so maybe we would have some regions of the forest where lightning strikes are more probable and other regions where they're less probable, maybe because of the altitude or the climate or, or something. And so one would want to put more fire breaks where one thinks there's a higher probability of a um, lightning strike. 
And if you do that under general conditions, and then you ask what is the size of the typical forest fire, so um, size of forest fire, and that turns out to be approximately power law. So um, again, the picture is some sort of an optimization process, and it's sort of optimization under uncertainty. We have greater probabilities in some regions than others that there are going to be lightning strikes, and that that um, then will lead to um, a, a power law distribution in the size of forest fires. We'll expect to see many small ones. Why? Because presumably, like, so let's imagine this is a, a big lightning lightning place. And so if that's a big lightning place, maybe then we would put lots of fire breaks in here. So then lots of lightning hits here, and most of those forest fires are pretty small. Lightning down here maybe is very rare. It doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, we're going to get bigger forest fires. So you can see right away how there's going to be some sort of a long-tailed distributions. A few, rarely some very large ones, and often some smaller forest fires. So um, although it was originally cast in terms of a forest fire uh, model, one could picture uh, this as a fairly general mechanism. You could think about it in terms of failures in transportation networks or in the internet. Um, how if, if we have, uh, if we're trying to sort of optimize our networks, make them as tolerant as possible to random failure, we would expect that most of the time when there is an accident, it's not that big a deal. So if this network, if this uh, airport goes down or something, that doesn't affect anybody except the people at this airport. So that would be a very small event. Um, if this airport goes down, that would be um, a bigger deal because it would affect people at this, this, and this airport. Um, I'm picturing this as now sort of directed. So we're just kind of going out from the center like this water example. And of course, if the water main goes down, then everybody's in trouble. But that happens quite rarely because there's only one water main in all of these 12, out of all of these 12 or 13. So um, highly optimized tolerance. It's a, it's a nice model. Um, you can simulate it. The mathematical details, again, are much more than we can get into. But it's another picture through which um, one can get power laws. And again, it's very different than these random sorts of things. It imagines some sort of intentionality, someone designing or engineering networks with certain properties. And those properties, under many conditions, naturally lead to power loss.